How many of you feel like you have it all together? Anyone? (laughs) That's my dad over there, just so you know. I'm thankful he's here all the way from California, and uh, he supports us in the work that we're doing. But in reality, who has it all together, right? When you think about training your children, do you feel qualified? My mother didn't feel qualified either. But when I was just a child, she took Hebrews 11, she knelt down with us, and she claimed it, the faith chapter, that God would give her the wisdom that she would need. And he did. My education wasn't perfect. I was a very rebellious young person. But God got through to me, and when he did, I knew where to go for my answers. Why? Because my mother had given me the resources. So that's what I want to encourage you as parents to do. Don't give up. Set before your children the right way, and God will bless. As Mother said, we've been here for five years. My main department here at UT Pines is working in the publishing area. I'm in charge of doing the monthly newsletter and printing all the materials for the Lifestyle Center and brochures and so forth. I help out in education seminars and seminars in general, the education department as well. Uh, It's been a great experience being here. I know God led us. When you put your life in his hands, you cannot doubt that he will give you what you need. And he will direct you where you need to go. We're going to jump into our topic this morning now. What is true education? What is true education? The story is told of a young child who, at the age of two could read English. Any two-year-olds here? We have a few. Who's two? One right over there. So Josanya and back here. So two years old, he was doing what? He was reading English at four. Any four-year-olds? Anyone who's four or five? No? All right, so five years old, or four years old, he was typing original work in French. At the age of five, he had devised a formula whereby he could name the day of the week for any given historical date. How many five-year-olds could do that in this room? That's pretty amazing, right? So he could tell you in 1970 what October 19 was. Was it a Sunday? Was it a Monday? He could tell you at five years old. At the age of eight, he projected a new Lagarthams table based on the number 12. He entered Harvard at the age of uh, 12 and graduated with distinction before he was 16. A graduate in psychology at the Harvard uh, University himself, his father believed in awakening the child of two years of age and interest in intellectual activity and a love of knowledge. So his father believed in training the very young child in academics and that if you gave them a love for learning, that they could do more than you ever thought. And so that's what he did for his son. He started early. He worked intensively. And his son graduated from Harvard before he was 16. What was the outcome of this child? History tells us that in his early 20s, the son distanced himself from his parents, shunning the public's eye and seeking a normal life. Why? He was burned out. It's a tragic story. He'd been pushed so hard, and he couldn't take it anymore. An amazing intellect. He could do it as a young child. But was it really true education? We can think of this story and we say, I wouldn't do that to my child. But we do try to imitate it to a lesser or greater degree in the education of our children. We push them. You know, we we find people all around and they say, your child's six and they don't know how to read or write. They're seven, and they're not doing fractions and all these different things. What is 
education. Many would say that it's book learning, knowledge, skills, training, intellectual culture. Dr. Mark gave us a definition of education from the 1800s and then a modern dictionary, right? Vastly different concepts of education. But when we think of education, what do we think of? What do you think of? Do you think it's book learning, knowledge, skills, training, intellectual culture? Well, we have to ask another question. What is the purpose of education? Is it to make money? Is it to get a good job? Is it to support yourself, get a degree, make a name for yourself? Is this the purpose of education? These are all common thoughts. There's a push to do something in life, to be someone, especially for our children. And it's true. We should want to have lives that are worthy. We don't want to just live off of people, right? We want to make sure that our children are contributors to society. But where are we getting our ideas from and our ambitions for life? We know the right answer, right? What is it? Where should we get our ideas from? The God, the Bible. That's the right answer. But when it comes down to the practical, what do we really believe? Last night, Dr. Mark shared that the Bible is to be our main textbook in education, and we can say, amen, praise God. And then we go home, and what do we do? Watch TV. We watch TV. We pull out the, the academic textbooks, and that becomes the sole educator of our children. We know the right answers But how do we apply it? Education. The process of learning to attain knowledge for a useful life. If we were just to simply define education, most people would agree that it would be the process of learning to attain knowledge for a useful life. So what is a useful life? What is the aim of life? What is life's purpose? The purpose for which all training should aid in fulfilling. What is that purpose? Did you know that the Bible tells us? John 17, 3. We're going to be using this scripture a few times in this presentation. John 17, 3 says, and this is life eternal. So does that sound like it's a pretty good description of what the purpose of life is going to be, right? Life eternal is not just now, but it's for all eternity, And this is truly living, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. And this is life. Proverbs 9, verse 10 tells us the knowledge of the holy is understanding. So you mean that young child who graduated from Harvard at the age of 16, had an amazing intellect full of knowledge, wasn't receiving education? He didn't really have understanding? Proverbs 9 verse 10 says, the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Jeremiah 9, 23 through 24 tells us, thus saith the Lord. So who's talking? God is talking. You think you want to listen? God, does he know what he's talking about? Oh, yes. Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. But let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. What is your purpose in training your children? And in training yourself. The knowledge of God. This knowledge is the foundation of all true education. And of all true service. 
The Son of God was appointed to come to this earth to take humanity and by his own example to be a great educating power among men. His experience in man's behalf was to enable him to resist Satan's power. He came to mold character and to give mental power to shed abroad the beams of what? True education. That the true aim of life might not be lost sight of. So if we are rightly educating, will we understand what the true aim of life is? Jesus came to this world to show what true education is and thereby to teach the true aim of life. So what is that aim, an object of life? The aim and object of life is not to secure temporal advantages. What? You mean training my children isn't to make sure that they can get a good car, they can get a good job, They can have a big family. That's not the purpose of our education. The aim and object of life is not to secure temporal advantages, but to make sure of eternal advantages. Are temporal advantages wrong? No, there's nothing wrong with money. There's nothing wrong with having a car, right? It helps us. But is that our object is that the most important thing John 17:3 tells us this is life eternal that they might know thee the only true god and jesus christ whom thou hast sent the great object of life is well defined in the old catechism to glorify god and enjoy him forever To make the possession of worldly honor or riches our ruling motive is unworthy of one who has been redeemed by the blood of Christ. It should rather be our aim to gain knowledge and wisdom. So we want to gain knowledge and wisdom, right? So that should be a good aim, but it's for the purpose. Uh, It says that we may become better Christians and be prepared for greater usefulness rendering more faithful service to our creator and by our example and influence leading others also to glorify God. So we want to gain knowledge. We want to gain wisdom. We want to train our children to be beneficial to society. But what does that really mean? It means bringing souls into the kingdom of heaven. As Christians, we have a different aim, a different purpose than the world would accept. That purpose is to know God and to reach souls for his kingdom. And all training, all education, all learning is to help us accomplish this purpose. If our education is not showing us more about who God is and not enabling us to serve him better bringing souls into his kingdom, then our education is faulty. Our education is faulty. People often wonder why the youth are leaving the church today. Did you know we've been told? In the book Adventist Home, page 318, It says the reason why the youth of the present age are not more religiously inclined is that their education is defective. What do you mean their education is defective? They go to church school, right? They have a Bible class. But their education is defective. Could it be that even in our Christian schools, even in our home school, we've missed the purpose of education, the process by which we are truly training. True education is in essence knowing God. So if we think of true education as knowing God, does that mean that we never open a math book? We never learn how to write and um, do all those academic things? No, of course not. 
We're told true education does not ignore the value of scientific knowledge or literary acquirements, but above information, it values power, above power, goodness, above intellectual acquirements, character. The world does not so much need men of great intellect as of noble character. It needs men in whom ability is controlled by steadfast principle. How many can truthfully answer this question? What is the essential education for this time? Education means much more than many suppose. And I hope that that's the reason you're here. That you have realized that you need to understand better God's plan for you. And that you've come to learn from him. Education means much more than many suppose. True education embraces physical, mental, and moral training. For what purpose? In order that all the powers shall be fitted for the best development, to do service for God and to do work for the uplifting of humanity. That sounds like the aim of life, right? To glorify God and bring souls into his kingdom. To seek for self-recognition, for self-glorification, will leave the human agent destitute of the spirit of God. Destitute of that grace which will make him a useful, efficient worker for Christ. So education means much more than many suppose. If our education is not utilizing the physical, the mental, and the spiritual for the purpose of training us how to glorify God and bring souls into his kingdom, then what is it? Defective. Defective. Jesus said in John 15, 5, Without me ye can do nothing. You mean even in education? Even when I'm learning about one plus one? Without the vital principles of true religion, without the knowledge of how to serve and glorify the Redeemer, education is more harmful than beneficial. So if we're just educating how to add the history of the world, if we're just educating on these academic subjects... Did you, do you realize that it's actually more harmful than beneficial? More harmful than beneficial. When education in human minds is pushed to such an extent that the love of God wanes in the heart, that prayer is neglected and that there is a failure to cultivate the spiritual attributes, it is wholly, what? Disastrous. So if education isn't pointing us back to our creator. It's wholly disastrous. It would be far better to cease seeking to obtain an education and to recover your soul from its languishing condition than to gain the best of educations and lose sight of eternal advantages. It would be better if we never learned academics if it means at the cost of our eternal salvation. Do we realize how serious that is? I'm thankful God always gives balance, though. I would not in any case counsel restriction of the education to which God has set no limit. Our education does not end with the advantages that this world can give. Through all eternity, the chosen of God will be learners. But I would advise restriction of following those methods of education which imperil the soul and defeat the purpose for which time and money are spent. Education is a grand life work, but to obtain true education, it is necessary to possess that wisdom which comes from God alone. The Lord God should be represented in every phase of our education. Every phase. So let me ask you, as adults, how many of you, looking back at your educational experience, could say, 
When I was learning, say, addition, I learned more about God through addition. Anyone? A couple people. That's good. But not most of us. What about when you were learning how to spell? Did you learn through those words about the word who became flesh and dwelt among us? Most of us haven't. So what does that mean about our, our education? It means that it's been defective. The Lord God should be represented in every phase of our education. So let's just review. The purpose of life is to what? Glorify God and win souls for heaven. And all education should help us know God better and fit us to accomplish life's purpose. This is, in essence, true education. Book book learning is important. But it is always with life's purpose in view. True education embraces the three aspects, and Joshua mentioned that earlier this morning. It's the physical or the practical, the mental, and the moral or spiritual training. So what does this look like in the practical sense? Because we can read these things and we can say, yes! And then what? We go home and we don't do anything different because we don't know how. So how is it done? Let's just give an example of how this could be done. Uh, Take math because most people, math is really important on their list. So let's look at how you could utilize these three aspects of education in mathematics. So first, I will learn multiplication in my education. So that's the mental training, right? You're going to study how to do multiplication. And then you don't stop there, but you make it practical. So what's one way you could make it practical? Well, I will double my recipe when making lunch today and use what I am learning in multiplication. So that's the practical sense. But then we don't end there, right? Because the world also does that sometimes. You have the mental, and sometimes they do do the practical, how you can utilize it. But they miss the most important, which is the spiritual. So how can we spiritually apply this uh, in our education? What can I learn about God's character or my spiritual life through multiplication? And this is an example. As I faithfully serve God, he promises to multiply his blessings in my life. It doesn't have to be complicated. But everything physical can remind us of something, what? Spiritual. If I don't apply the practical, or most importantly, the spiritual, then I've missed out on true education. True education is to help us know God and in knowing him, glorify his name and bring souls into his kingdom. So how could multiplication bring souls into his kingdom? I learn about multiplication in a book. I apply it in the kitchen. Perhaps I invite others over to my house and serve them the meal using this as a witnessing opportunity. I see more of who God is and what he wants from me through multiplication. Thus, multiplication becomes the means of glorifying God in my life and bringing souls closer to him. This is true education. It's so simple, yet so profound. Physical, mental, and spiritual training. This type of education prepares us to be useful in this life and in the life to come. It makes us well-rounded and, most of all, helps us to know God better. Because in knowing God, we're told this is life eternal. We can help our children know their Savior. We have fulfilled our goal as educators. But if we miss out on that, The first great lesson in all education is to know and understand the will of God. We should bring into every day of life 
the effort to gain this knowledge. To learn science through human interpretation alone is to obtain a false education. But to learn of God and Christ is to learn the science of heaven. The confusion in education has come because the wisdom and knowledge of God has not been exalted. So let's look at some examples of true education from the Bible. Just a couple. David. David was but a humble shepherd, trained in the home, but he was anointed of the Lord, and he became the ruler of Israel. Had he received, like, training to be the ruler of Israel? No! He had. In God's way. Not according to man's standards, but according to God's standards. What about Joseph? Joseph was but a child when taken to Egypt and made a slave in Potiphar's house. Yet because of his early training, he excelled and was placed in charge of all of Potiphar's belongings and eventually was made the governor of Egypt. What about John the Baptist? John the Baptist was one of the greatest prophets that has ever lived. Yet he received his training where? In the desert. We're told in the natural order of things, the son of Zacharias would have been educated for the priesthood. But the training of the rabbinical schools would have unfitted him for his work. God did not send him to the teachers of theology to learn how to interpret the scriptures. He called him to the desert that he might learn of nature, and nature's God. When we think, if I follow God's plan, my children aren't going to be educated. They're not going to meet the world standard. That's right. They're going to be higher than the world standard. The world may not recognize them at first, but eventually they will take knowledge of them that they have been with Jesus. One more example. What about Jesus? He did not attend the schools this day. Was his education balanced? Was he fitted to be useful in society? What did he become after those 30 years at home? He was the great physician, the mighty counselor, carpenter, Good shepherd, master designer, interpreter, priest, leader, commander, governor, ruler, deliverer, judge, king, teacher, and so much more. Was his education extensive enough? Could you have that kind of education in your home? We're told that all wondered at his knowledge of the law and the prophecies, and the question passed from one to another, how knoweth this man letters, having never learned? No one was regarded as qualified to be a religious teacher unless he had studied in the rabbinical schools. And both Jesus and John the Baptist had been represented as ignorant because they had not received this training. Will your children be labeled as ignorant by some? Oh, yes. So was Jesus and John Baptist. Those who heard them were astonished, though, at their knowledge of the scriptures, having never learned. Of men they had not, truly. But the God of heaven was their teacher, and from him they had received the highest kind of wisdom. I'm reminded of a story that I heard last year. This one lady, she had only received a 10th grade education. Most people would consider it not complete, but she had a heart for service. She went to a foreign country, and while she was there, uh, the doctor who was over the clinic there said that he would be leaving. So he took her around and he taught her everything he knew. He taught her how to uh, suture wounds, clean teeth or pull teeth. Um, everything except one thing that she would need, and that was how to deliver babies. 
but it wasn't too long after he left that someone came to her and said, you're all we have. What was she going to do? You know, a lot of things can go wrong when a baby's being delivered. Well, she went to the library. She pulled out a book on how to deliver babies. She read it. She studied it. During her time in that country, she ended up delivering five babies every week. She was there for years. You know how many she lost? Not one. Not one. Later, that same lady, she had a desire to go and help in this one dangerous area. And she knew that she didn't have qualifications except she had lots of skills that she could offer. And so she went to the, the office that would give her the papers to go into this area. She talked to the receptionist and she told her all that she could do in the, for this area. And the, the receptionist said, yes, you're just the person we need. I'm so thankful that you're willing because not many people were willing to go into this area. She said, but you have to talk to the one in charge. So she went upstairs she told him what she could do, what she wanted to do. And he looked at her and he said, what degree do you have? She said, well, I don't have a degree. And he said, well, you can't go into this area then. You don't have the qualifications. And she said, but I just told you all the things that I could offer. No. Nope. So she was pretty discouraged. She went home, but she prayed about it. And through a series of events, she ended up in that area. God worked it out, put her there. And before long, she was placed in charge of doctors and nurses. She was operating the whole operation. Where had she received her training? From God. She was willing to learn. And though she had not received the education that man says was essential, she had received an education that was far much more valuable. I firmly believe that if a child knows how to study, it doesn't matter what they need to learn. They will be able to learn it. That is one of our goals in training our children. And if they know the purpose of their lives, they will be able to fulfill their role in humanity. Jesus' life demonstrated the worthlessness of those things that men regarded as life's great essentials. Born amid surroundings, the rudest, sharing a peasant's home, a peasant's fair, a craftsman's occupation, living a life of obscurity, identifying himself with the world's unknown toilers. Amidst these conditions and surroundings, Jesus followed the divine plan of education. The schools of his time, with their magnifying of things small and their belittling of things great, he did not seek. His education was gained directly from the heaven-appointed sources, from useful work, from the study of the scriptures and of nature, and from the experiences of life. God's lesson books, full of instruction to all who bring to them the willing hand, the seeing eye, and the understanding heart. So what is true education? Well, first, true education is not the forcing of instruction on an unready and unreceptive mind. We looked at that earlier this morning. That's not true education. The forcing of knowledge, of instruction upon an unready and unreceptive mind. True education is not merely taking a certain course of study. That's not true education. The world is full of learners. But that does not equal true education. So what is true education according to God? True education is a grand science, for it is founded on the fear of the Lord, which is the beginning of wisdom. True education is that which will train children and youth for the life that now is and in re reference to that which is to come. 
for an inheritance in that better country, even and heavenly. True education is a knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ, whom he hath sent. True education is the inculcation of those ideas that will impress the mind and heart with the knowledge of God, the creator, and Jesus Christ, the redeemer. True education is religion. True education is missionary training. True education is the power of using our faculties so as to achieve beneficial results. True education is well-defined as the harmonious development of all the faculties, a full and adequate preparation for this life and the future eternal life. True education is the preparation of the physical, the mental, and the moral powers for the performance of every duty, It is the training of body, mind, and soul for divine service. This is the education that will endure unto eternal life. True education is mental, physical, and spiritual training gained to accomplish life's purpose. To glorify God and bring souls into his kingdom. Does the world understand it? Will your family members say, yes, I agree with you. This is what you should do. Probably not. Romans 12 verse 2 says, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. The end of all true education is expressed in the words of Christ. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Do you want that type of education for your family? For yourself? I pray so. And as we go through the rest of this seminar, we'll see more of how to apply these principles of true education. But for now, let's pray, and we'll take a break. Our Heavenly Father, your thoughts are not our thoughts. Your ways are not our ways. But they're better. They're higher. They're broader. They're full of blessing. And we want to understand how to do it, how to follow your plan. So we ask that as we continue to go through this seminar, that you will give us direction, that you will make it clear, and that we can experience true education right here, right now. And give all to you. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. But he answered and said, it is written... Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Matthew chapter 4 verse 4.